Hi everyone, Yannick for Kansan Precision Shooting. Today we're making a review video that a lot of people are waiting for since last year, SHOT Show. We'll be comparing the new Labrador LX to the Garmin Xero C1 Pro. Garmin took a top place in the chronograph world since its entry on the market last November. We've learned a few months later that Infinition, aka Labrador, have been working on a similar unit for a few years now. Unit that will be available in a couple days or week. So we had the chance to compare both of them side to side in different condition with different device and of course in a way that is not suggested in the user manual to see where the limits are and how they compare one to the other. On a side note, I'm a sponsored shooter by Labradar. I've conducted a review with Etienne that is not, but who home the Garmin we've used. I'll try to be as neutral as I can in this review, and for a matter of fact, the first time I've seen this prototype of the, of the LX was more than two years ago, so it has been in the making for a, quite a while now. So, the good old Labrador have been on the market for quite a while now and technologies have evolved. The PK device to aim unreliable Bluetooth connection have nothing to compare to the new LX. The only advantage it will keep is how far it can read your projectile downrange. Where the new LX will only pick up as far as 20 yards from our testing, the old unit could reach around 100 yards. So now that's being said, we will talk about the general characteristic of the Garmin and the Elix in the first part of the video. Then we'll do all our kind of sketchy testing to see how both units perform, read the data and what their limits are. And finally, we will talk about the applications that are available for both of them. So first of all, the Garmin is known to be made in China compared to the Elix that is made here in Canada. The housing of the LX is all metal, where the Garmin is plastic, giving it a bit more weight though. Other than the weight, we haven't seen any impact of the housing material using both units in sub-zero temperature and warm sunny day without any issues. Both are capable of being weapon mounted, but the Garmin does not cover any damage to the unit resulting in the recoil of the rifle. Labrador have announced that it will be covered over their warranty and is made for this purpose. That and the metal arsing let us feel that it might be a more solid unit, but only time and more experience will tell. Both use internal battery, where Labrador also have the possibility to plug an external battery pack when in function if needed. From our journey, the Garmin have used about 9% of his battery per hour where the LX use about 12%, so it's not a big difference. And this speed of discharge of the battery looks to be about the same from our testing last winter in sub-zero temperature. For the screen, I can tell the name of the technology used, but the LX have a screen that is similar to a cell phone, really bright and good contrast, and the Garmin looks like an electronic book. In the sun, we can easily read both of them with a slight advantage on the Garmin but in low light condition, the Labrador have a huge advantage. Both use pretty simple and intuitive menu, a huge improvement over the original Labrador, that is for sure. For adding new series, arming, checking the result, the menu of the LX is more convenient and quick, referring in part to the four or five question you always get asked with the Garmin when you start a new series. The LX will always keep the last session uh, settings in, so you only have to arm it back and you're good to go unless you've changed your weapon type. Also, Labrador offer on the mainstream, just under the muzzle velocity, one custom downrange speed. The LX also offers, like the older version, the possibility to plug the device directly to your computer and access all the raw data with the downrange speeds. Now, are they at the testing range? So, as stated before, when use is expected by the logic or the user manual, both units perform flawlessly. 
picking every shot without being well aligned or playing in two settings. So we tested how far we can go against the logic and still pick reliable data. So first of all, comparing the old Labrador, the Elix and the Garmin, we had at worst a difference in reading of 0.15%, which is into the margin of error claimed by all, by, well, by both manufacturers. So data looks to be reliable. That being said, the old Labrador have failed on every testing we've done, so we will only present the Elix and the Garmin result. So test number one, how far side to side from the muzzle can we go to pick up a shot? Four feet, didn't work. Three feet, didn't work. Two feet, we got readings on the LX and nothing on the Garmin. One feet and less, both tracks all the shots. Interesting fact, this test was conducted on the Doppler mode on the LX, which worked the same as the Garmin. There is also an auto trigger mode that works, in my opinion, even better at discriminating other people's shots. I don't know or cannot tell how this dark magic works, but while being tested at MCAN last week, we were able to shoot at less than two feet from other shooters where the Garmin of the other shooters around were picking your shot, the Elix was discriminating them with all units being rifle mounted. Which means the Labrador didn't pick up the other shooters that were really close to us but the Garmin did pick up our shots. And for disclaimer, we were really close one to the others. Test number two, how far in the angle can we go to still pick up a shot? At 45 degrees angle, both unit got no reading. At 35 degrees, the Elix got all three shots taken when Garmin didn't pick any. At 25 degrees or less, both unit picked up all the shots. Test number three. How far behind the muzzle can we go to get a reading? At one feet behind the muzzle, both were giving reading. At two feet behind, the Elix missed one reading where the Garmin worked all the time. At three feet behind, the Elix didn't track any shot where the Garmin got them all. Test number four. In movement. So we simulate a run at a PRS stage to see if we could collect the data when shooting and moving around from props to props. The Garmin gave us warnings but still picked up all the shots and no problem from the Elix also picked up all the shots. So that concludes the positional part of the unit and now we'll be testing different weapon device. So test number 5 was rimfire. We shot 22 long rifle both unit miss nothing without touching any other setting than the speed bracket. Test number six, fast shooting. Both unit were inconsistent. They are obviously not made for that. They take a couple seconds to do their analysis and showing us a speed. So every shot taken during the, the period of, of calculation didn't track. Test number seven, 12 gauge. Both units were also inconsistent in their reading. Sometimes the Garmin got a reading, sometimes the Elix got a reading, sometimes both of them read them, and sometimes none of them read. So we do not recommend using the units for 12 gauge. And we've tested Birdshot, BB, and Slug with the same results. Test number eight, shooting with a bow. Both were tracking without issue on the bow profile, of course. Test number nine, nerf gun. Again, both unit did not give us reliable and repeatable data. So our conclusion with both unit, if you don't try to do something stupid, they work and perform pretty flawlessly. And now for the last part, the application available for both device. So Labrador is coming with a brand new app with the Elix that is also working with the old Labrador and solve for real, the Bluetooth connection issue. Both app will help access and extract the data from the unit. Garmin offer an email CSV file where Labrador let you download it and send it the way you want. 
of course you can go back on different series different shot collected data and delay the shots that make your sd looks bad on social media with both apps what's missing in my opinion with the garmin app is the ability to control the unit changing setting arms disarm and stuff like that it's far from being a deal breaker just a little something that could be improved over time so in our conclusion Technologies have evolved and the Elix and the Garmin are letting a full generation of chronographs behind. Both units being the same price and have been really reliable over the testing and it will come to the small difference we brought in this review for the buyers to make a choice. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe the channel and see you all at the range.